Okay, before we start, Dr. Wish to make a correction eh? because the uh, last week very rush. Okay, we came out to do the mechanism for the tineal chloride, isn't it? Eh? Tineal chloride. One, because the tineal chloride case is a little bit special. It, pro uh, it produced chloride, which is a nucleophile, and also uh, the uh, what we call the, the solvent use is pyridine. Okay? So it's possible uh, there is a possibility that there is a competition between SN2 and uh, E2 reaction. Okay? One of our uh, friends, uh, Malay friends, Ahmad, is it Ahmad? I can't remember. Huh? He came out and he drew the mechanism for E2 elimination. Okay? Using pyridine. Okay? But we know that the reaction between the alcohol and the tineal chloride is a SN2 reaction. Okay? Uh, although it's possible to get an elimination product as a side product, okay? But there are many factors involved in a reaction. It could be thermodynamic, okay? Whether it can reach up to the activation state, easy or not. So it's not every reaction, although theoretically, it can proceed in that way, okay, to pro produce some side product. This is entirely possible. But, of course, the chemist uh, will also carry out the reaction, and from the empirical evidence, you may find that you know, the product itself, the major product itself, is actually a substitution product. Okay, then you have to propose a different mechanism for it. As the uh, doctor said, it could be thermodynamic reason or it could be kinetic reason although the reaction can proceed in that way it might take years to get the result yet you do not get the product okay so we are very certain that the reaction between the alcohol and tineal chloride you will get a substitution product okay therefore as i said eh, before you study although you know the mechanism but that is not the whole picture your mechanism might be entirely correct as what uh, your friend showed last week okay but you will not get a full mark because your product is wrong normally in the exam it will also give you the product to be fair okay the reaction and product ask you to propose a mechanism then the so called uh, question is very clear but last week Dr. D didn't give you the product okay uh, Although we know that the product is a substitution product, but sometimes we confuse and very rush. So that, uh, uh, so doctor want to repeat again, eh, to show you again the mechanism. The mechanism actually is very simple. Yet, the other student who came out to show the mechanism for substitution, he got it right, half right. You know, the arrow is wrong. That's why confused. Then you, because you do not memorize, then you will see that the product you got is also wrong. Okay, so I'm, what I'm going to show you is the correct answer. Okay, so everyone please have to pay attention. Very simple. Okay. So, let's say you have this. Today, we, no, we will not do uh, what we call mechanism exercise huh? because the board is so small. Only one person can come up to write. Okay, but I hope you have already prepared. On Thursday, or no, on Wednesday, we are going to test you. Maybe the uh, beginnings, uh, 10 minutes of the lecture. Uh, we are going to test you on the mechanism of chapter 8. Is it? Chapter 8. Okay, so you get prepared. We will not, of course, we will not spend the whole session like last week to do mechanism because now you already can point it out what are the mistakes, the common mistakes that people, uh, your friends did. Is it? Uh, so once we have acknowledged which mistake. Uh, that people, uh, people commonly make, then you will be more careful. Okay? So, okay, let's say we have this alcohol, ethanol. Okay? And we have tineal chloride, which is S double bond O Cl Cl. Okay? So the first step always draw the curry arrow from a lone pair to attack the slightly positive atom. In this case, which is S, this is electronegative. These are all electronegative. Okay, so you will draw here. After this step, what happened? This one drop. Okay, actually, in, in reality, after you attack this, this go up, this go down, and this come down, but we, we just didn't show the step. Okay, so after that, you get a 
a chloride atom, isn't it? Eh? What you get is CH3, CH2, in this case, you have O, you have a H here, okay, and you have a S. Okay, double bond O, Cl. Everyone got under this step? Okay, because one Cl already dropped up. Okay, so you have a positive charge here. Okay, because now your oxygen atom have triple bond. Okay, what are the following steps? And you have pyridine. In this case, you have pyridine here. Six member ring. You have an N. Okay, a lone pair. Double bond, double bond, double bond here. Is it? Because your reaction is carried out in the pyridine. So you have to remove the H. Okay, remove this H. So the charge becomes neutral. Everyone can still follow? Then you get under CH3, CH2, O, in this case S double bond O, uh, Cl. You have to draw out this. If not, you cannot see. Eh? Like one of, uh, last week, one of your friends just write S O C L. You cannot see. There is still another Cl here. So what are the next step? Because this is slightly negative, this is slightly positive, and you have the chloride as a nucleophile. Okay? You have a chloride as nucleophile. So your chloride nucleophile, uh, what we call, come up from here. So in this step, uh, you actually should write uh, plus Cl negative here. Okay? Write it properly. Okay? Then, the, then you come up with this, you got this. Okay? Now you have a chloride. What the chloride does is a nucleophile. What is the difference between a nucleophile and a base? A base attack a proton. Okay, in this like pyridine attack the proton. Nucleophile attack a slightly positive uh, so-called uh, carbon. Okay, so the next step will be attack of the nucleophile to the C here. Okay, and this bond in this case break. Come, last week it didn't show this. Your friend didn't show this. Eh? And after it break, this one come out. Is it? Then you get a. What you got is a. What you got is now. You get a new product, CH3, CH2, Cl, plus, plus what? This one become SO2. You see? This O form a double bond. Okay, if you want to dry, draw it out, actually you do not need, but if you want to draw it out, you will get something like this. Isn't it? Eh? Six lone pair, one, two, uh, yeah, just like this. Eh? But you do not need two, okay? SO2 plus, plus what? Cl negative, you regenerate the Cl nucleophile for further reaction. Okay, so this is the correct mechanism. Everyone got this? Okay, so in the exam, if you were asked to show the mechanism, you make sure you show this mechanism. Okay, because this is a SN2, SN2 uh, uh, mechanism. Okay, it involves two species, okay, in one step. This is everything concerted okay happen in one step you got the the substitution product sn2 product okay why today like quite many are missing eh? a lot of empty seat there what happened to your friends eh? going for lunch write down your please write down your attendance eh? doctor have to keep a track okay when is your test two you were eh? Test 2, what is the date of test 2? 19 May. 19 May, now it's already 5th of May. It means 2 weeks time, you are going to have your test 2. So, uh, in this case, you will be tested 3 chapter. Chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10. Okay? So, doctor have to finish it uh, as soon as possible. Huh? This chapter, definitely we can finish this chapter in this week okay then the following week and two weeks to come we will cover chapter 10 so chapter 11 we will test you only in your final exam okay because if 19 of may i don't think we can finish everything before 19 of may eh? 19 of may is week what week week eight week nine cannot remember okay okay no problem let's continue so if everyone is clear, now we are going to study the other leaving group. Okay, what we call a tosylate. A tosylate. Okay, this group is called a tosylate. Okay. See?
this is in the this uh, brown uh, what we call uh, square here. Okay. So let's see. Alcohol can also be converted to alkyl tosylate. Previously, we said it converted to chloride, uh, bromide. It's also a good leaving group. In this case, this is a bulky leaving group. Okay, a tosylate bigger. Okay, and alkyl tosylate is composed of two parts. First one, the alkyl group. This is what the R is the alkyl group. Okay, from an alcohol. That's why you have an O here. And the tosylate. Okay, abbreviated for P toluene sulfonate. Uh, this part, we call it a tosylate. This tosylate is a good leaving group. Okay, in short form, you can also call it a tosyl group. Uh, this, the whole group is called a, a tosyl group. It's abbreviated as TS. Okay, that's why you say R, R O T S. Okay, O is from the uh, alcohol, R is from the alkyl group, the TS is the tosylate group. Okay, from here, this part. With O is called tosylate, without O is called uh, a tosyl group. Okay? So this is a, a new living group we are going to learn. So you, you can react your alcohol with what? Tosyl chloride. Okay, let's see what is tosyl chloride. The next slide. Oh. Okay, tosyl chloride means TSCl. If it, it didn't show in here, the tosyl chloride, the structure is uh, uh, this one. See? This tosyl chloride, you see? Now you draw it in the opposite side. The toluene, what is the toluene? CH3 benzene ring is a toluene. Okay, and you have a sulfonate site, a sulfonate functional group here, and you have a Cl here. This is abbreviated as TSCl, tosyl chloride. Okay, so you can imagine the mechanism is also very similar to this. Okay, let's say you have a, you have an alcohol. This is the simplest one, eh? and you have a tosyl chloride. You remember to draw the benzene ring. This is a benzene and a benzene ring because it's a toluene. You draw CH three here, and you have a sulfonate group C double one O, and you have a chloride. Okay, if I'm asking you to predict the mechanism, can you do so? It's very similar eh, to the thionyl chloride, isn't it? This one go out. Eh? Then you get a CH3 O positive. Okay, and you have a double bond O. Repeat again. Okay, then you have a, this is a positive charge. You have a pyridine. Okay, and then remove the H, come out here. So what you will get is a you get a CH3, you get a, a tosylate. See? Isn't it? CH3. Or you just put it in a short form, OTS. Okay, so you get this as a, a good leaving group. And this is can be for further reaction. It can be substitution reaction or elimination reaction, as we are going to show you later. Okay? So as you can see from the this is a mechanism. Eh? At, at this stage, you should be able to draw out the mechanism. Okay, it's a similar, similar to the tiny chloride one. Okay. So as I said, OH in this case, hydroxide is converted into a good leaving group OTS minus. Okay, tosylate group. Tosylate is a good leaving group because its conjugate acid, p toluene sulfonate acid, is a strong acid. Okay, if you have a conjugate base. Uh, acid, which is a strong acid, means your base is very weak base. Isn't it? It's a very good leaving group. So, as you can see, now you convert the alcohol, in this case, ethanol, react with tosyl chloride, although you draw it in the opposite way, but you must be able to imagine this mechanism. Okay? In the pyridine, in, in pyridine, you get a, a tosylate group. Okay? Uh, a tosylate group, alkyl tosylate. Okay, in this case, it's ethyl tosylate group plus a pyridine with a positive charge generated from this step plus a Cl negative. 
okay, generate from the first step. Okay, so continue. Alkyl tosylate undergo both neutrophilic substitution and bitter elimination. Okay, generally alkyl tosylate are treated with strong neutrophile and bases. In this case, eh, after you generate the ethyl tosylate, you react with a so-called either strong neutrophile and base. In this case, you have a strong neutrophile. Okay, methoxide. OCH3 negative, which is a strong nucleophile. If this is a strong nucleophile, you will expect it to undergo FN2 reaction. Okay, the nucleophile attack the slightly positive uh, carbon here and OTS left as a group. And you can form a salt because your met uh, this is sodium methoxide. Okay, later we are going to show you how to generate the alkoxide. Okay, very simple. Second step. Second step, if you are using a strong, the first uh, case, you are using a strong nucleophile. The second case, you use a, a strong nucleophilic base. In this case, it's a bulky base. Okay, bulky base will prefer e, E2 reaction. Okay, E2 reaction. So when you see this, eh, you must be able to guess already. Eh, potassium third butoxide. Isn't it? Attack, in this case, attack the bitter hydrogen see this is a carbon alpha carbon this is a bitter carbon this is a bitter hydrogen so it will undergo bitter elimination reaction elimination mean removal of of what water uh, no uh, in this case not water uh, removal of a h to form a, a double bond okay elimination mean form a, a double bond normally is removal of water but in this case, it, it, it doesn't remove a water. Okay, it, re, it remove a proton out to form a, a double bond. So this H will then go to uh, where does the H go? Eh? It should have uh, uh, form back the alcohol. Okay, form back the alcohol. See this O. Okay, please pay attention here. So you have H, 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 CH2, OTS. Okay, this is alpha, this is beta. Okay, now you have a, a what we call strong base, potassium, O, CH3, 3. O C C H three. Uh, this is negative charge. Okay, so this is going to uh, remove this, forming this this one go out. Okay, so what you get is a uh, a double bond, a double bond. H H H H O T S pair with a uh, potassium. Okay, in fact you have another O H C. CH3, 3, is it? Eh? Which is not uh, shown there. Okay? But as an organic chemist, we are always interested in what we call the organic compound form, eh? the major compound form. Other are just the side product. Okay? Everyone clear? Up to this stage? There is another important feature using what we call the uh, alkyl tosylate. Eh? You must be able to no also okay from the first step formation of tosylate proceed with retention of configuration at stereogenic center retention means it does not change the stereochemistry of the uh, product form okay in this case you see eh? now you have a secondary alcohol pointing out from the plane okay this is Pointing out from the plane, you react with torsyl chloride. When you see this, eh, you must be able to know eh, this is referring to torsyl chloride inside a pyridine. So what will happen? You will get a substitution reaction. Your chloride, uh, your OH now is converted to tosylate OTH. Okay, and the stereochemistry remain. 
That's why we call retention. Okay? But now, this is just a, you are replacing the, what we call the functional group. Functional group. Huh? Functional group. This is a better living group. Then, you react with methoxide, a strong nucleophile. A strong nucleophile will then attack the carbon here and re replace the OTS. Now, please pay attention. You see, there is an inversion of configuration. Because this is a bulky group, it does not attack from the same direction, which is pointing out it attacks from the back. Okay? The methoxide attacks from the back. That's why you change of stereochemistry from pointing out the plane to pointing in okay, at the back. So, this is something that you need to bear in mind. From In this case, cis isomer. Why this is cis? Because it's a cyclic compound with two substituent groups pointing out of the plane. That's why it's a cis isomer. At the end, after the second step, you get a, a trans isomer. One pointing out, one pointing in. Okay, this is the a general feature of using the torsio chloride. Everybody understand? Any question? You should try more exercise. Eh? Are you going uh, to attend a tutorial class also? Have you covered this chapter? Only the last chapter. Also, your online, online what we call quiz, is it? Eh? Don't forget that. Okay. Now we go to preparation of ether. Why is ether? Still remember ether R O R. Eh? Ether you have a symmetrical ether and unsymmetrical ether. Okay. So the first step. Okay, please pay attention here. Eh? We always start with alkyl chloride. Alkyl, what we call uh, alkyl halide. Because alkyl halide is a, a, bad, uh, is a good living group. Uh, it can react with nucleophile. In this case, if the nucleophile is hydroxide, undergo SN2 reaction, you will get an alcohol. Okay? If the alkyl halide is a uh, methoxide, okay? Alkoxide or methoxide, in this case methoxide, you will get a, an ether. Okay? So you have propyl chloride react with the methoxide. You will get a unsymmetrical ether. Okay? If you react, you want to get a symmetrical ether. In this case, this is ethyl bromide, you react with ethoxide. You, see? you will get a symmetrical ether. Everyone clear? This is a you can also imagine in the mechanism in your mind. Eh? This is SN2 mechanism. The negative charge will attack the C, the bromide leave the group. Then we will get eh, a product. So the preparation of ether by the method shown in the last two equations, in this case, these two using nucleophile or methoxide or uh, alkoxide, is called Williamson ether synthesis. Okay? So this method to Produce ether using uh, alkoxide and alkoxide and uh, alkyl halide is called Williamson ether synthesis. Okay, very simple. So as you can see, eh, in theory, unsymmetrical ether can be synthesized in two different ways because there are two different alkyl group. Okay, let's pay attention here. But however, in practice, one path is usually preferred. Why? Let's look at this ether. Iso, isopropyl methyl ether. Okay, isopropyl methyl ether. So you can start your synthesis with a isopropyl bromide, okay, isopropyl bromide or methoxide. Or, okay, you can start your reaction with methyl bromide and uh, isopropyl uh, what, what do you call it? isopropyl uh, isopropyl site okay so which one do you think is better? because now your nucleophile will attack this what we call secondary alkyl halide okay this is more substituted in a way okay more steric hindrances. So this path 
is not preferred. This is better because you start with a, a primary uh, halide. Okay, you start with primary halide. So this become the nucleophile attack this. So this path is more preferred. Okay, if in the question it asks you why one path is preferred than the other, then you must be able to state the reason. Eh? Because of the one is a primary alkyl halide, one is a secondary alkyl halide. Secondary or tertiary alkyl halide have more steric hindrance. That means your methoxide, eh, uh, your alkoxide uh, nucleophile attack is blocked by the alkyl group. Okay? So, and how to produce, how to, uh, what we call synthesize an alkoxide. Okay? It comes from a alkoxide salt. Okay? That means you have to react your alcohol with a metal or metal, uh, uh, what we call sodium hydride. Okay? Alkoxide can be prepared from alcohol by Bronsted Rowley acid. Okay? This is like an acid base reaction. So now the base used is sodium hydride. Sodium hydride. Sodium hydride is a good base for forming alkoxide ion as the, as the byproduct of the reaction. H2 is a gas that is just bubbled out of the reaction mixture. So you do not need to produce other organic side product. You produce uh, hydrogen gas which is just bubbled out. Huh? So it's very clean reaction. As you can see, The reaction is uh, what we call uh, acid-based uh, bronsted uh, lowry reaction. So you have, uh, for example, you have ethanol. Okay, you have ethanol. Okay, and now you have sodium hydride. Sodium hydride. Okay, the negative charge will always attack this H. Okay, come out here. You will get a CH3. CH2O ethoxide eh, plus Na positive plus H2 as a gas re release. Okay? This is what you got from the, the reaction here. You get a sodium ethoxide. Okay? The sodium ethoxide can be further react with the uh, what we call uh, alkyl halide to provide to produce ether. Okay? As uh, been shown just now. Clear, everyone? So now, how about this? Reaction of ether with strong acid. Uh, this is also a similar reaction, but it involves two steps. Uh, we are going to show you this one. A poor living group in ether, okay, the OR group is a poor living group, can be first converted into a good living group by using strong acid like HBr and HI. Okay? So you can also imagine, start to imagine already how does it work. For example, you have a uh, maybe a symmetrical ether, the simplest one. You have a CH three O CH three. Okay, if you want to use a strong acid in this case HBr or HI, you react with H. Let's say Br. Okay? What what you will get? Can you predict? This lone pair will attack attack what? Attack the H here. Okay, this one drop. Is it? So you will get a CH3 O H positive CH3 plus Br negative. Okay? Now the bromide produce act as a, a nucleophile, is it? It can act as a nucleophile, attack this one, so this whole group go out. Okay, can you see? So you will produce a CH3 Br plus, plus what? CH3 OH. Okay, is it? Then the reaction step, repeat. The CH3 OH again, now you got your first step. Eh? Then the CH3, CH3, OH, react with HBr again. Okay? Can you see? So the step repeat. 
this one out. Okay, so you will get a what you will get CH3 OH H plus BR negative. Okay, and the whole step and the BR negative produce attack the this one come out as a water. So at the end, what is your final result? You will get two Rx if they are symmetrical. One water molecule, is it? So you will get, in this case, it's uh, not symmetrical. Eh? RO, you see this? You see this? Eh? RO, R prime. It shows that this is unsymmetrical. But the mechanism are the same. Okay, react with HX, bromide or iodide because HCl, Cl is, HCl is a weaker acid as we know. So normally we use HBr or HI, then you will produce Rx, Rx plus H2O from the mechanism showing here. Okay, that's why it's so important to know the mechanism. Once you have got, once you have understood the mechanism, you can apply it. Eh? anywhere so okay however the example showing you on the board is simplest one because both of them are symmetrical and both of them are a primary uh, alcohol okay primary ether or primary alcohol how about secondary and tertiary alcohol then you will expect it to undergo a different types of mechanism not SN1 but SN, uh, not SN2 in this case this is SN2 you will undergo SN1 mechanism. Okay, let's show you the example. Okay, the mechanism is either S SN1 or SN2 depending on the identity of the alkyl group. Okay, so secondary and tertiary alkyl group bonded to the ether oxygen. Okay, it will undergo SN1 reaction. Okay, so for Metal or primary R group, you will undergo SN2 reaction. Just take this ether as an example. Okay, let's take this ether as an example. Pay attention there. Okay, you have CH3 O CH3. Okay, let's pay attention here. React with HI. Okay, what is the first step? Everyone got this? You will get, repeat again CH3 C, CH3. CH3 O H CH3 a positive charge okay what is this this is a tertiary alkyl uh, what we call you can say tertiary ether eh, or alcohol so what tends to happen is not SN2 eh? last time you produce okay now you produce iodide eh? you produce an iodide so what is the next step the next step is not iodide attack this why? Because if iodide attack this carbon, it will become SN2. Okay? The first step, the next step would be forming of a carbocation. Eh? Because the formation of ter tertiary carbocation is more stable. Okay? You will get CH3, C, CH3, CH3, a positive charge plus, plus what? CH3, OH. Do you see this? Okay? Plus a CH3 OH. Okay? Then what will happen? This carbocation will react with the this uh, iodide. Okay? The iodide will then attack this to form CH3 C C this that is why the mechanism that you have learned in the previous chapter are very important. Huh? This showing that this is a what SN1 reaction. Then what happened to this? Uh, repeat again. 
is it to undergo SN SN2 reaction eh? so in ether you have SN1 and SN2 ok so let's see eh? uh, the same thing which is showing to you on the whiteboard is here so you do not need to copy unless if you want to copy you better go back and close your eyes not close your eyes close the book and try to draw it out ok ok then the methanol produced is further react with the HI undergo a SN2 mechanism so if we are going to test you in the exam uh, this question can carry how many marks maybe 8 marks is it not difficult you you uh, how to say it? you earn the marks very easily if you practice uh, because this is some not something very difficult to understand okay okay please come back here continue with uh, preparation of epoxide this is very simple eh? a continue uh, is something continue from the previous what you have learned eh? the reaction so now we are going to introduce you a new name called halohydrins halohydrin mean you have a halogen group and you have a OH group okay uh, our organic compound that contain both a hydroxyl group OH group and a halogen atom on adjacent carbon uh, these are adjacent carbon next to it okay so this carbon have a OH group and this carbon have a halide group this functional group we call it as a hydro halohydrin in halohydrin or halohydrin Malay will be halo eh? but English will be halo okay halo and intramolecular versions of a Williamson ether synthesis can be occurred for uh, to form epoxide you still remember what is William uh, ether synthesis that means you have a alkyl halide group and you have a alkoxide is it so the first step will be the forming of alkoxide okay if you see eh, you have this halohydrine you have the OH group and you have the halide okay the first step is to react with base to convert the OH hydroxyl group to to what to alkoxide group okay imagine that you have a base react with the OH you form a in this case alkoxide group the alkoxide group uh, the outside alkoxide functional group form will further act as a, a nucleophile okay to undergo a SN2 mechanism alkoxide react with the carbon here the C drop so you form a you form a epoxide okay you form a you form an epoxide okay so this is how epoxide is formed from a halohydrin group okay everyone clear so how about reaction with epoxide this is page 49 eh? this chapter we have 66 so I better cover two more pages then we stop okay okay epoxide pay attention here eh? epoxide do not contain a good living group however epoxide is very what we call uh, it have a ring strain okay pay attention here eh? epoxide does not contain a good living group however because epoxide is a three membered ring it has the ring strain ring strain means very tight together so it's also a very active organic compound eh? it can undergo a uh, reaction easily the reaction undergo by epoxide is what we call a ring opening reaction okay you open the three member ring okay with a poor living group okay in this case the ring strain is relieved so try try to imagine this is epoxide now you have oxygen here so these two carbon is slightly positive partially positive so it will attack the carbon okay the partially positive carbon if they are symmetrical so the chances is the attack either side is fine okay so what will happen pay attention here after the nucleophile attack one of the carbon so the the bond here between C and O will break so the O now 
attached to the other C. Okay, so you have nucleophile here, and you have a, in this case, a good living group here, alkox uh, alkoxide. Okay, the green break. Of course, it wouldn't stay like this. It will further react with water to form a form back a uh, what we call the hydroxyl group. Okay, the reaction occur readily with a strong nucleophile. In in the example given just now, it's a strong nucleophile, or it can react with acid such as H Z. Z is a nucleophilic atom. Could be C L B R and and I. Eh? So you, you can also write HX because Z is a bit confusing here. Normally we use hydro acid, but it's the same meaning. Eh? You just want to show that the Z is a nucleophilic atom. So we are going to show you the mechanism for the second part in on Wednesday. Today we just have to focus on this nucleophile. Okay, a strong nucleophile. Imagine that now you have the simplest epoxide. Okay, the first step, this is a nucleophile cyanide ion. Attack here. <laughs> very busy, eh? Your friend is very busy. Okay, of course, you draw it nicely. Okay, you have the epoxide here plus cyanide. The first step, cyanide. Second step, water. Okay, so pay attention here. So the cyanide here will attack one of this carbon. Okay, and this bond will break. Is it? So what you get is a, what you get is a, and you can show it here, huh? you can see it here. You will get this cyanide attack to here. So actually it forming the bond, forming an O. Okay, this one, because this bond is breaking, you have an O negative charge here. So this still remain. Okay, now you have a new CN. Okay, and H. H here, okay. You will got this. Where is it? Not this one. Okay, you will get a. Uh, you will get this. Then this alkoxide will further react with water. You see, there is a water molecule here. Okay, attack the H. Come out with OH. Okay, you will get this as a a product. Okay, how about reaction with HX? The general mechanism will, as you can see, you have a lone pair here, you will attack the hydrogen first, okay, which we are going to study on Wednesday. Okay, I think we better stop here. Eh?